All right, we are going to have our first congregational here, and we've got a special treat. Brother Dan and Susan have taken time this morning uh, to come in. Brother Dan, of course, is battling cancer and hasn't eaten in a week and a half. Um, the one thing he does want, though, is a strawberry shake. And so, Brother Dan... <laughs> <laughs> so we're determined to get him a strawberry shake. And Brother Dan, we've got several gift cards for you for that. And I hope that Susan won't hold back on you. I don't know what to say. But uh, Brother Dan is going to come and lead us in our first congregational. And uh, I appreciate that. Brother Dan, to do that, you're going to have to, we've got a... <laughs> but folks, why don't we express our appreciation to Dan, all right? Turn to 191. You're already standing. <laughs> it's such a privilege to be here today. Here we go. Jesse, there we go. All right, testing. Brother Dan, how do you think they did? They did wonderful. Oh, Dan. <laughs> Brother Dan, I don't think they held it out quite right. No, br I Brother Dan, okay, now, now, just let me, okay, now, come on, Brother Dan. Now, we, we, we're going to sing that last verse again. Jess, how close are you to getting it up? Are we up? We're there? All right, we're going to, Twill be my endless theme and glory with the angels I will sing. Twill be a song with glorious harmony when the courts of heaven ring. We're going to sing that again. And you've got to watch Brother Dan. He's going to hold us out. And then when he goes in my heart. Okay, now you've got to follow him, all right? And Brother Dan, if they don't, I mean, you, you don't be easy on us, all right? That's right. All right, one more time. Okay. Twill be my endless theme and
rings a melody, there rings a melody, with heaven's harmony. In my heart there rings a melody, there rings a melody of love. Now, Pastor, I am turning this baton over to you. But remember, I was mad at you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Let's open up with a word of prayer. Brother Stephen, as long as you're up here, brother, why don't you open us up with a word of prayer? Dear Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for the opportunity to be in your house, Lord, and serve you. Thank you for the strength of pastor and the strength of my dad to be able to come up and do something like this, Lord. Um, be with us as we continue our day and uh, continue our journey, Lord. Be with pastor as he preaches. In your name I pray, amen. All right, go ahead and be seated, and uh, folks, you slip out, right. that's what, Brother Dan, we love you. Folks, give him one more round of applause. <laughs> uh. Oh, amen, that's good. I believe we ought to give honor to whom honor is due, yeah. and uh, folks, Dan has been a faithful servant of God. He loves the Lord, not been ashamed of the gospel. He shared Christ with his doctors, with his nurses, with anybody who listened to him. And uh, he's been a wonderful blessing. He's been a wonderful testimony of grace and courage, of, of just mercy and kindness as he's walked through this last several months of this battle with cancer. And of course, it's been, quite frankly, nothing but bad news as far as this world is concerned, but his eyes are fixed on heaven. And uh, he's been a wonderful testimony, and folks, I pray that uh, you'll keep them in your prayers, but also that you'll uh, uh, learn a valuable lesson on how to live life to the point when God takes you home. Amen. And folks, we, we have a God that's worth living for, we, we have a God that's worth dying for, and praise the Lord. All right, I'm going to run through some announcements here, and uh, we're in the process of trying to get things up and running. Um, next, of course, we reopened Sunday school today, had a wonderful time, and uh, we are going to be opening uh, the nurseries two weeks from today. Next Sunday, we're going to be re reopening the, the pre-K Sunday school class officially, and so uh, those of you kids for that, uh, bring, bring them out again. We're again reopening that. I think everything, as far as I was told, went real well today, and I'm thankful for that and appreciate all of our Sunday school teachers. How did it feel to be able to teach again? Yeah, I bet it did, just to be able to get down there and see those young people or adults and be able to, to fellowship with them and be able to uh, go over the things of the Lord. Uh, let's see here. Next Sunday night, the church is going to be providing a meal before the Sunday evening service. Now, for the next several weeks, we're going to still keep our services at 6. We'll let you know what we're going to do permanently there sometime in the next month. But the service Sunday night services are at 6, but we're going to be serving a meal between 5 and 6 p.m. next Sunday night. Uh, Brother Tim Kozlowski is going to be coordinating that. It'll be uh, given out just as we did before in the containers and so that everything will be no contact so to speak and we'll get those to you but we'd love to have you uh, come on out eat in the parking lot the fellowship hall the school basement will be open the the, the yard will be open if it's if it's a day like today my goodness I hope we'd all eat outside but we're going to take advantage of that and that's going to be served between 5 and 6 p.m. next Sunday evening and so come on out take advantage of that on Tuesday June 16th there is a senior saints potluck luncheon uh, that will be at St. Ferial Island and uh, that's going to be down at the large shelter down there, and it's pretty easy to find if you just go down on the island and go along the river. That'll be from 11 until 1, so that's Tuesday, June 16th. On Tuesday, June 23rd, now, did the ladies' breakfast get moved? Okay, we moved it because they didn't want to have breakfast and lunch that day together, so I'm teasing. But June 23rd is going to be the ladies' breakfast at Hungry House. Come ready to share a verse that helped you through these trying times, and so that'll take place on June 23rd. Uh, let's see here, June 19th and 20th, we're going to be having a boys' jungle camp, and uh, they, they will not catch the coronavirus. They will get stung by mosquitoes, all right? And uh, I'm joking there, but uh, the gnats, haven't the gnats been bad? My goodness, they've been thick at our house. I don't know what's going on. I, I, I'm so sweet. I, I don't know what it is. I'm joking. Uh, all right, uh, the ladies' summer social is going to be held on Saturday, June 27th. That'll be from 10 to 1. Uh, Mrs. Wendy Burks and then Mrs. Rebecca Weiss are going to be uh, speaking for that. And so take advantage of that, ladies. That'll be from 10 to 1 on Saturday, June 27th, so a month out. Then Sunday, June 28th, uh, Prairie Christian Academy is going to be having its graduation service. And, of course, that was scheduled for last week. We postponed it a month. And so we're looking forward to that. But that's going to be Sunday night, June 28th, and we got 
three young people graduating, Brother Jed Holfeld, uh, Laura Schrick, and then my son Jacob Dahl. They're going to be graduating, and we're proud of them, and uh, praise the Lord. You'll be praying for them. This has been a weird senior year as far as the end is concerned. Been a little different than normal, all right? But uh, we got three great young people, and I'm proud of them. Uh, let me see here then. Uh, Tuesday, June 30th, is going to be Prairie Christian Academy's Awards Night, and so we'll look forward to that uh, for the young people. Uh, let's see here. Then the men's Bible study, guys, is the first and third Tuesdays of every month at 9 a.m. That's at the North Building, and we're in the book of 1 Thessalonians, and so come on out, guys. If you're able to do that, we'd love to have you down at the North Building, and we've set the tables up in kind of a round square table fashion, not round table, but uh, everybody's had a good time and been able to go over the Word of God, and we'd love to have you be a part of that. Tonight, after the service is done, the Brahms are celebrating 40 years of marriage today, and so we ought to give them a hand for that. Amen. <laughs> Now, they've got some, some friends and in-laws, and I didn't know that was possible, but I'm joking. All right, but they, they are celebrating 42 years of marriage today as well, and so why don't we give them a hand? <laughs> So in that row right there, there's 82 years of marriage. That's tremendous. And so praise God for that, and we're happy for them. But after the service tonight, they're going to have cake and ice cream. And so they'll be serving that downstairs in the fellowship hall. You're welcome to use the fellowship hall as well as the school basement. And by the way, the school basement, we, we got it done several weeks ago, but there's a new drop ceiling down there. So when you talk to each other, you can actually hear one another. And that's something we've never experienced in 50 years of that, of that building. And so we're excited about that and want you to be a part. There'll be plenty of space for everybody, but t t tonight, right after the service, we'll do that and enjoy that uh, time together celebrating with them. So praise the Lord. I think that's all the announcements I have. Brother John, let's have another song. All right, grab your hymnals. If you have them with you, let's stand. Let's go to number 259, 259. If not, we'll get it up here on the screen. Hold on, hold on, hold on. 259. Jesus saves. There we are. All right, 259. We have heard the joyful sound. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Spread the tidings all around. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Bear the news to every land. Climb the steeps and cross the waves. Onward tis our Lord's command. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Wafted on the rolling tide. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Tell to sinners far and wide. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Sing ye highlands of the sea, echo back ye ocean caves, earth shall keep her jubilee. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Sing above the battle strife, Jesus saves, Jesus saves. By his death and endless life, Jesus saves, Jesus saves, sing it softly through the gloom, when the heart for mercy craves, sing in triumph for the tomb, Jesus saves, Jesus saves, give the winds a mighty voice, Jesus saves, Jesus saves, let the nations now rejoice. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Shout salvation full and free. Highest hills and deepest caves. This our song of victory. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Thank you very much. Please remain standing. Pastor. All right. Yeah, you go ahead and be seated. You can be seated. Uh, we'll run through just a couple of announcements. Then we're going to sing that first verse, number 259, again. Uh, 
I remember growing up as a kid here, we used to have, before we broke into our Sunday school classes for a number of years, we'd all meet in the auditorium and we'd sing that hymn, Jesus, the first verse, Jesus saves, Jesus saves, and a wonderful song, and that really was uh, kind of the, the, the uh, impetus of our, of our church early on, was just getting the gospel out, and by the grace of God, I hope that hasn't changed. All right, we need to get the gospel out. And folks, that's the most important thing that we can ever hope to do in any era and any time and is, is give the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is the only thing that can change someone. I know right now we're living in the midst of a political um, <laughs> nightmare. All right, there are things going on all over the place. But I'll tell you this, the only thing that will change someone's heart and change them for eternity is the gospel. And God forbid we as a child of God would ever forget that. Well, I, I stand for liberty and stand for truth, but folks, the most important aspect of truth and liberty is Jesus Christ. And please don't forget that. We must, we must. The greatest cure in this moment is the gospel. And I'd encourage you, don't forget that. I think many times we're, we, this, this is a very divisive time. Have you noticed all right, there, there are divisive things going all over, on, all over our country, and it's a shame, all right? By the way, one of the seven abominations that God hates is he that soweth discord among the brethren. We must be very careful in our own hearts that we're not allowing discord to be drummed up, and Satan loves that. He, 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 he delights in that, by the way. He wants to turn us, and we're seeing it in our culture, are we not? I mean, today there, there, are, there are cities that are being ravaged with rioting and looting, and it's sad, but we're also seeing uh, uh, divisions within families and divisions within, within a country, but also, folks, if we're not careful, divisions within a church family. And we've got to be very, very careful that we promote Christ. Let's lift up Christ, and what he, what he does is he draws all men unto him. And we want to come behind the banner of the cross. And as we do that, folks, we make much of Christ. And uh, I promise you, there's a lot of things. There's a lot of things that will get taken care of if we lift up Christ. But let's go ahead and sing that, that, that first verse and chorus of, of, of number 259, Jesus Saves. Let's go ahead. You guys can stay seated, seated for a couple moments, all right? We'll let you stay sitting as long as you sing out loud. Here we go. We have heard the joyful sound. We have heard the joyful sound. Jesus saves, Jesus saves, spread the tidings all around. Jesus saves, Jesus saves, bear the news to every land. Wind the seeps and cross the waves. Here we go. Onward tis our Lord's command. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. All right, that's good. Brother John? All right, again, let's stand one, uh, one last time here and go to number 143, please. 143, yeah. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight. Visions of rapture now burst on my side. Angels descending bring from above. Echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I and my Savior am happy.
happy and blessed, watching and waiting, looking above, filled with his goodness, lost in his love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Thank you very much. Great singing. You may be seated. And Barb, bring our special, please. Well, praise the Lord. If you've got your Bibles, go to Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. And uh, so good to see those of you who are here today. It's a blessing to my heart. It really does warm my soul and appreciate you tremendously. And uh, folks, we'll just keep fighting the good fight. And uh, Lord will, the Lord will work. He really will. And uh, He is. God is doing a work. And uh, praise the Lord for that. Sometimes we don't understand it. Amen. Sometimes we don't, we don't see all the, the, the strings God's pulling, but I promise you he's accomplishing his will, and thank the Lord for that. I would ask you, of course, to pray for the Lidberg family, and uh, folks, Dan, um, a week ago Thursday, um, his...
cancer has basically not allowed him to eat or drink anything. And so he has, uh, uh, he, he drinks a little water and then he, he'll spit it out. But if he swallows it, he starts to throw up violently. And so his, his body is not working. And so just please pray for Dan and Susan, um, unless the Lord works an absolute miracle. Uh, Dan's time on this world is short, uh, but he is ready to go to the next world, and I'm thankful for that. He's got a sweet testimony, and if you haven't had a chance to give him a call, he or Susan, if you, by the way, if you do call, uh, try to make it somewhat short and try to make it encouraging. Again, there's a lot that they're bearing, um, and they're doing well, but do, an, do it to be an encouragement. And then also, um, folks, I would encourage you just, just to pray for the Armstrong family as well. Um, that, that would be Debbie and Mike Johnson's, it would be Debbie's sister, and they had a five-month-old baby um, that was born with a number of health issues and that little one went to be with the Lord, I believe, yesterday, if I'm not mistaken. Am I correct in saying that? And so please pray for uh, the, the Armstrong family, Bill and Kathy, and just a lot that's going on there. And then I would also ask you to pray for the Sauvels, Lauren and Jerry Sauvel. Lauren, he's been uh, dealing with a number of health issues for several years now, and his health is deteriorating somewhat. And so I'd ask you to pray for them as well. And they, they want to be here, but uh, they're not able to be at this time. Hebrews chapter 11. Let's stand together and reverence the Word of God. Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. Isn't it a wonderful day out? Man, yesterday, today, these are just beautiful, gorgeous, gorgeous days. And enjoy them. I'd love to try to bottle these up and keep a summer full of them. I doubt that that'll happen, but I love days like this, boy. These are, these are good outdoor weather working days is what they are. And so I send my wife and kids out and tell them what I need done. And so <laughs> Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11, verse number 1. It says this, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. I want to read verse 3 here as well. It says, Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Verse 5 says, By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found, because God had translated him. Before his translation he had this testimony that he pleased God. Verse 6, But without faith it is... What's that next word? Impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Let's pray. Father, I come to you this morning, and I come to you with, uh, Father, uh, my church family. Lord, these are my brothers and sisters in Christ. And Father, I love them. They mean so much. And Father, I would just pray that, Lord, you'd work in a special way today. We need that. Father, we need to hear from heaven. Father, we are a needy people, and I know we look at the world and we, Lord, we're saddened and we're distressed, but I'm afraid that we, if we're not careful, we're, we're as the church of Laodicea. Lord, we fancy ourselves rich and, and increased with goods, and Lord, we look at our lives and we're proud of what we've become, but Lord, your son told us that we're miserable and poor, we're wretched and blind and naked. And I pray that we would humble our hearts, that we'd come to you and realize that Father, we've got to have you. We need you. And Lord, I pray that in this, in this meeting today, that your Holy Spirit would anoint my lips, that he'd anoint all of our hearts, and there'd be something that is done in each of us today. I ask this in Christ's name. Amen. You may be seated. Brother Moore, we had you and Laura up there so we could make sure you're behaving. that chance, right? All right. Hebrews chapter 11, a wonderful chapter on the topic of faith. Um, faith is the cornerstone of Christianity. Without faith in the Christian life, we have nothing. We, without faith, we have a religion without God. Without faith, we have a salvation without Christ. Without faith, we have a moral walk without the Holy Spirit. And without faith, Christianity is empty, it's vain, and it's useless. Please understand that. You know, as I was thinking about this and getting ready for, for this message, and this has been on my mind throughout the week, but I, by faith I'm saved, all right? The Bible says by grace, uh, by faith, uh, through grace are we saved, not, not of ourselves, it is a gift of God. Uh, by faith I'm kept, all right? Um, I, I have assurance of my salvation, I have eternal security because of faith. By faith I walk, the Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. Uh, by faith we see here in our text today that I can please or I can please God. Without faith it is impossible, the Bible says, to please God. By faith one day I'll enter heaven's 
pearly gates. Um, faith is absolutely, and let me use the word of the day, essential, all right? Faith is absolutely essential. Faith is essential to your salvation. Faith is essential to reading your Bible. Faith is essential. Now, please listen to me, all right? When you read your Bible, if you do not read it with faith, you're not going to hear from God. Please understand that. You say, well, 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 I'm reading my Bible and I'm not getting anything. Then you might want to check how you're reading your Bible. If you're not coming to it with faith, brother, you're not going to get anything from it. Some of us haven't heard from God in a long time because we have become a skeptic and a scorner and we blame God and the blame is not on God's side. The blame is on my side. I need to read God's word by faith. Uh, faith is absolutely essential to your prayer life. We are to pray with faith. Faith. Uh, James 1 says to, to ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. The Bible says, let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. We, faith is essential to our prayer life. Faith is essential to our, to our gospel witness. Friend, if you don't believe that the gospel can save somebody, then you're going to be a very ineffective witness. And, and don't misunderstand what I'm saying. I know, I know all of you, or the vast majority of you would say, oh, I know God, God can save someone. Yes, but can God save one through your ability to witness? Do you understand that the disciples believed they were going to see fruit? They believed that. Now, now understand, uh, my fruit may not be as much as uh, Brother Moore's fruit, as much as Isaac's fruit, but I can bring forth fruit unto a holy God. But my gospel witness needs to have faith involved with it. Uh, faith is absolutely essential to your marriage. Husband, do you know that you'll never be a good husband unless you decide to be a husband by faith? Because you know what your wife is going to do, guys? Tick you off. That's good preaching. All right? There's 82 years of marriage in that role. We won't have them testify, but I can promise you in 82, in 82 years of marriage, doesn't that sound impressive? There's been a few moments, all right? And we have to be a good husband by faith. Hey, ladies, you need to be a good wife by faith. The Bible says that a husband is to love his wife. The, the Bible says that a wife is to submit to her husband. You're not going to do that unless you have faith involved in your marriage. Uh, faith is essential to rearing your family for Christ. Parents, you're not going to be able to do what you're supposed to do without faith. And so I look at this topic today, and I, I, I don't know how to magnify it as much as it deserves to be magnified. Without faith, the Bible says it is not possible, it's impossible to please God. So today, as you live your life, let's be honest, there are many of us, we got up, we, we, we went to the bathroom, we, we, we ate our breakfast, we went and brushed our teeth, we combed our hair, we put our church clothes on, and much of that was done, quite honestly, without any faith. You say, well, pastor, what do you mean? There was no reliance on God. There was no trusting the Lord for that. We did it out of self-will. We did it out of self-preservation. We did it for us. And friend, when we do not do it in faith, you didn't please the Lord. And so today, as I look at this topic, I, I don't know how to impress that upon you anymore. Let me say this number one this morning. Faith believes God. Faith believes God. I'm going to give you some thoughts this morning, but I want you, and, and some of you, you've been a Christian a long time, you say, oh, Pastor, I know all about faith. Folks, it's amazing how we as Christians who know all about faith do not live by faith. If there's something we've learned the last three or four months, it's that a lot of Christians do not live by faith that thought they did. Correct? Our lives have been challenged. Our Christianity has been challenged. You say, well, well, Pastor, I'm still a child of God. I'm still a Christian. Yes, I know that. That's by the grace of God. But our faith has been showed to be very minuscule. We, we have been forced to look at our own lives. And quite frankly, I think if we've been honest, we've been a little bit humbled in our own hearts. Now, faith believes God. All right, Faith today believes this book. All right? I believe God. Faith says, listen to me, God, you are right. I believe you, God. That, that, that first thing that's given, you know, many times we say, look at all the great men and women of faith in this chapter, and you're right to say that. But do you understand what verse 3 says? It says, through faith, who? We. we. Can you look at your Bibles? Hebrews 11, 3. Through faith, who? We. We, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. 
Do you understand that God spoke the world into existence? And by the way, there wasn't this, this, this great uh, uh, avoid of, of, of mass and material and elements. No, no, God made it out of nothing. There was nothing there. And God made it from something that wasn't there. That's miraculous. That's creative power. And God says, hey, you, you need to say, I believe God. I'm amazed today as we sit back and folks, we as Christians question the word of God. Faith says, I believe God. Christian today, in your heart of hearts, in your marriage, in, 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 in your home, rearing your kids, in your job, in your livelihood, in your life, in your attendance of church, in your dealing with this, tra- uh, this, the, the, this uh, set of traumatic experiences that we're going through, how do you sit back and say, look to God? You say, well, well, pastor, I, I just don't know what the answers are. Do you believe God? There are some things that are taking place, and they've caused a lot of stress on us, have they not? There are things that we're dealing with, and whether we like to admit it or not, it's caused us to have a little bit of extra stress in our lives. If you don't believe me, go on Facebook, all right? There's, a, there's stress, man. There's angst. We're dealing with this. Faith says, I believe God. There's a simple reliance. And when I say simple, I I don't mean that it's easy. I mean that it's just a a childlike reliance on God. Folks, I wonder today, do you believe God? You say, oh, pastor, I know I'm saying, no, no, that's not what I, do you believe God? Put, put, Put the rubber on the pavement. There are things that this book says that we're not doing. So let me ask you again. Do you believe God? Now, let me help you to understand this a little bit further. Number one, faith believes God. All right? By the way, that's God's word. All right? If you look at verse number three, we believe, we understand the worlds were framed by the word of God. So I believe God. I believe his word. But secondly, faith follows God. Faith follows follows God. Let, let's just look at this chapter. If you keep your Bibles open. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 4. The Bible says this, by faith Abel what? Offered, all right? Verse number 5, by faith Enoch was what? Translated. And we know that was because he walked with God, by the way. Um, verse number 7, it says, by faith Noah being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear. Did, what did he do? Prepared an ark. So Noah prepared an ark. Verse number 8. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive her an inheritance, what? Obeyed. Obeyed. Abraham left his father's house, his homeland, not knowing where he was going. All right? Some of you ladies feel like that every time you go on a trip with your husband. But uh, verse 17. All right? Jump to verse 17. The Bible says this. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, what did he do? Offered up Isaac, man. I mean, that's an incredible thing that Abraham, his faith caused him to do that. Verse 20, by faith, Isaac blessed Jacob. Verse 21, by faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed both the sons of Joseph. Verse 22, by faith, Joseph, when he died, made mention of the departing of the children of Israel and gave commandment concerning his bones. I believe that's the only New Testament reference to Joseph. But Joseph commanded his bones to be removed from Egypt. By what? faith, all right? Verse 23, by faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid. Moses' parents, they, they hid their son, all right, uh, in defiance to, 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 to Pharaoh's edict, all right? Verse 24, by faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer what? Affliction, all right? Moses identified with God's people and forsook Egypt. Verse number 30, by faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they were what? compassed about seven days. Joshua marched around Jericho, right? Yes, all right, fought the battle of Jericho. Verse number 31, by faith the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believed not when she had received the spies with peace. Rahab sided with Israel. All of these people had something in common. Their faith made them do something. So when you say, Pastor, my faith believes God, that's a wonderful thing to say, but then that means that your faith follows God. 
Okay? So, so, so if I say I have faith, if I, if I have faith that, that, that I can step off this, this platform without being hurt, but I don't step off this platform, do I have faith? Yes or no? No, I don't. You say, well, 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 Pastor, you say you believe it. Yes, but I will not do anything about it. See, this is where Christianity dies. There's a lot of us that say, oh, I believe God, but will not do anything. You say, oh, oh, pastor, I think that's silly. I, I think you're being judgmental. I think you're being, is that not what this chapter teaches us? By faith, these people followed God. When God came to Abraham and said, Abraham, leave. Where am I going, God? I'll tell you when we get there. Oh, okay. By faith, Noah built an ark when they had never seen rain. Build an ark, Noah. Where? Down, in, down, down, down at the sea? No. Build it on the land. <laughs> God, <laughs> it's a big ark. And, 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 and I don't have any heavy equipment here. I got me and my three boys, and we are not pulling that thing down to the sea. Build the ark. Yes, God. Faith followed God. Hey, here's the deal. <laughs> the Bible says, husband, love your wife as Christ loved the church and gave him so for it. Well, <laughs> you, know, you know, come on. Is that not what it says? Well, P Pastor, I mean, that's unreasonable. She's not right with God. What does that have to do with the command to you? The Bible says we're training up a child in the way he should go, and when he's old, he'll not depart from it. I'm to discipline my children according to the Scriptures, am I not? I'm supposed to correct my son. And by the way, correct my daughters. That, 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 that is not joyous in the moment, is it? That's hard. It's hard to correct. It's, it's hard to do that properly. It's hard to even do that improperly. It's a really difficult thing. It is. It's just a, it's an emotional time for a parent, for a child. It's difficult. But is that not what the Bible says? You say, well, I know better. Then you don't believe God. You see, you say, well, well pastor, I mean, I, I, I know better. I know that's because you don't believe God. So... Faith believes God. Faith follows God. Thirdly, and I want you to look at verse 1 with me. It says, now faith is the what? Substance of things hoped for, the what? The evidence of things not seen. See, faith believes God. It's the substance of things hoped for. But the second thing it says in verse 1, and this is really what caught my heart and caught my attention, it's the evidence of things not seen. Faith vindicates God. Not only does faith say, God, you are right, faith says, I am wrong. Man is wrong. Humanity is wrong. You say, oh, uh, uh, pastor, I have no problem with that. Hold on a moment. See, in our lives today, God's on trial. In our lives today, we have put God on trial. We have said, God, prove yourself. God, you need to do what, what, what I think you should do. Just stop for a moment. Consider this. You say, oh, pastor, I, I, I've never doubted. Oh, yes, you have. Folks, we have a man that I love that's going to go to be with the Lord. I have prayed for months and months and months that Dan Lidberg would be healed. Now, God can still heal him, and I do believe that. He is the great physician. He can bring the dead back to life. But if God allows nature to take its course, Dan's going to go to be with the Lord a lot sooner than I wanted it. Yes? Do you know that if I'm not careful, and, and, and I, I'm not trying to beat you up this morning, but folks, there's a part of us that says, God, you're not, that's not right. God, that's not fair. God, that, that's not just. You say, oh, oh, pastor, no, 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 listen to me. All right? Ten years ago when my wife had a tumor and we didn't know what it was and we didn't know what was going on, I had those questions again. I said, God, this isn't right. God, that's the woman I love. That's the woman that's given her life. We, we, we've, 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 we've faithfully served you. We, we, we've, never, we've never made it about uh, the things of this world. We've tried to do right. We've tried to, we've tried to please you, God. Why would you do this to her? It's not fair. It's not just. 
It's not right. When you lose a loved one, you say, God, look at so-and-so. I read Psalm 73 this morning. Asaph is praising the Lord, and then he looks at the wicked, and his heart becomes envious, and he, he looks at them and says, God, they're wicked, and they're vulgar, and somehow they seem hourly to be blessed, and, and I'm persecuted. God, that's not fair. It's not right. It's not just. See, folks, we've all done this. If you've lived a little bit of life, you've done this. But here's what faith does. Faith says, God, I can't see it, and I don't understand it, but I believe you, and I'm wrong. God, you're right. You're right in what you do. You're right in how you do it. And though I don't understand it, and though I don't like it, and though I don't agree with it, and David in Psalm 142, the Bible says he poured out his complaint to God when his, when his heart and his spirit were overwhelmed within him. He complained to God, and God's big enough to handle that. God was big enough to handle me walking out uh, down the road uh, in front of our house and, and, and down a couple miles and praying and, and, and debating and arguing and, and being fresh. God can handle that. But at the end of that process, my faith needs to say, but God... You're right. And God, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. Someone you've prayed for for years passes away without accepting the gospel and dies without Jesus Christ. You say, well, Pastor, I, you know, and I'll tell you this, I never know anybody's heart. I don't know if someone's saved or lost. I don't, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not the final judge. I'm not, that, I'm not that person. But a person dies without Christ, and they're going to split hell wide open, is what my Bible teaches. And I've prayed for them for years and years and years. You say, God, how come you didn't save them? How come I gave them the gospel? How come they never trust? God is right. And I'm wrong. See, the clay has no right to accuse the potter of being unjust. But we do it. We do it. Hey, you, you read this passage of Scripture. Do you know that Abraham, when he was told to, to leave <laughs> his father's homeland, he obeyed by faith, and Isaac and Jacob continued that, and they did what God told them to do by faith. And the Bible says these all died, and they did not receive the promises that God had given them for this earth. They never got it in this life. But God said, you followed me, you obeyed me. You said, no matter what, God, I don't understand it. I don't see it. I don't know why I'm going through this. Lord, I don't, I don't comprehend it. But God, you're right. God, you're right. And I'm wrong. Folks, Christianity is being crucified today because we will not vindicate our God. We have taken our God and we have, in our, in our little human wrath and arrogance, we've pulled him up and, and, and we've put him on the witness stand and we've said, God, now you prove yourself. No. He says, God, please come off the witness stand. You're the judge. I have no right to deprive you of what is yours. And God, I'll gladly get on the witness stand and say, Lord, I'm wrong. Lord, I don't understand it. I don't see it. Sometimes I don't agree with it. But faith vindicates. It's the evidence of things not seen. And Christian, I look at us today, and, and, and I struggle. I, 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 I see what's going on in our country. I see what's going on in our world, and, and I just I don't grasp it. I, I look at it as, as, as we worship modern education. We worship modern medicine. And, 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 and please, don't miss, I'm not trying to speak negatively of some of the things and the CDC's guidelines, but we have bought into the world's philosophy that says man is right. You know, God is right. God is right. That means there are some things that we're going to be faced with in, the, in the, the weeks and months and years ahead. And if we're not, the next generation will be. And they've got to have an understanding of what faith truly is. When Moses' parents were told to kill that child, they hid him. By faith. Faith says, God, 
you're right. And God, we're wrong. And folks, I believe the first part of that is pretty easy to roll off our mouths. Saying, God, you're right. I don't think, I don't think, I don't think there's a soul in here today that would have a problem saying that. The hard part is when we're faced with this to say, God, that I'm wrong. You ever had one of those conversations with your spouse? You can tell them they're right, but you are not saying you were wrong. Anybody familiar with that? It's hard to come out. <laughs> it is. We're all arrogant little creatures. We say, oh, God, I, I know you're right. I would, I, I would rarely dispute that. Yeah, I know. But when I vindicate God, only one of us can be right. That makes the other one of us wrong. And folks, I, I look at this, you know, <laughs> Look at what's going on in our culture. And folks, you know, do you, do you understand that a man who believes that life does not begin at conception is not a good doctor? You say, well, that doesn't mean he's wrong about the coronavirus. You're probably right. But it means I should be a little bit suspectful of what I'm hearing. I need to take things in and I need to process them. You know, God gave you a mind too. By, by the way, what, read Psalm 119. Do you know that God tells us when we love his word, he makes us smarter than our teachers? I love that. Every student in here ought to love that. But God gave me a brain. God wants me to exercise it, and the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Man is not always right. In fact, quite oftentimes through history, man has been completely 100% wrong. Do you know who's never been wrong? My God. And folks, as we deal with things, you say, well, Pastor, you're talking about social, cultural things, and I wish you wouldn't. Folks, our problem is we don't like it because it hits us where we live. It offends us. We say, well, well, well you know, you know I, I, that doesn't make you right. Never said I was right. I, I'm wrong. God is right. I don't have a problem saying that. But Christian, in our own hearts, as we look up to heaven, I wonder today, is God on trial in your life? Have you put him there? Have you doubted the love of God? Have you doubted the goodness of God? Have you doubted the grace of God? Have you challenged God because of a tragedy in your life? Have you challenged God because of a difficulty you're going through? And maybe, right, maybe right now you don't have a job. Maybe you're, you're going through a time and you say, Pastor, I didn't, I, I, God, I didn't do anything to lose this. I worked hard. I showed up for work. Why did this happen to me? It's not fair. But faith vindicates God. He says, God, you're not on trial today. You'll provide for me and you'll care for me. And I know that. And Christian, in our heart of hearts today, would you just please give me your attention? Faith, it believes God. Faith follows God. And faith vindicates God. I don't want to put God on trial. I, I, I don't want to condemn him. And his decisions. I want to allow God to be God. And say, Lord, you're right. <laughs> and Lord, I'm wrong. Christian, today in your heart of hearts, I wonder if you'd look within. I wonder if you challenge your own mind, your own heart. Look, look, look in that, 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 that spiritual law of liberty and examine yourself. Friend, are you born again? Are you saved? You say, well, I, I hope so. That's not faith. Faith believes God. Amen. Christian, you say, I am saved. I am going to heaven. Heaven's my home. Then does your faith follow God? Or are you standing on the precipice? Oh, I think it would. I, I know it. Well, you know, if I, if I, if I went out and, and, and shared the gospel, I, I think God could do something with my life. I, I think if, I, I, think if I, I loved my wife like I, God would have me to, I think if I submitted to my husband like God would have me to, I think if I, I think, but I just, I just, I just, I just, I just can't. Faith follows God. Amen. And lastly, faith vindicates God. And folks, I believe for any of us in this room today who've lived a little bit of life, there are moments... When our hearts said, God, that's not fair. God, that's not right. I don't understand it, Lord. Why, why would you let that happen to him? Why, did, why does he or why does she have to have cancer, God? Why don't they get a good result? 
Why aren't they blessed? Like, God, why? Faith says, God, get back up in the judge's seat. And I'll just confess that I'm not right. I'm wrong. Lord, you're always right. Let's go and stand to our feet. Friend, today with a message such as this, I wish there was a way to, honestly, to speak more eloquently. There, there is such a necessary truth here. Because I'm, I'm afraid that many of us as born-again children of God are not walking by faith. Therefore, we are not pleasing God. We're walking in self-will. We're walking in arrogance. We're walking in, I am doing a good job. That's not faith. That might be honorable with men. That is not honorable with God. It's impossible to please God. But that's what the scriptures say. And friend, today I just wonder in your heart, I wonder in my own heart, faith believes God. It's God, you're right. Faith follows God. And faith vindicates God. It says, God, I'm wrong. <laughs> Man is wrong. Humanity is wrong. Because God, you're always right. Christian, I wonder in your heart of hearts today, as you step back and examine that, I wonder if there's an area in your life where God's on trial. You, you've put him in that corner and you said, now God, you can't come out until you prove to me. That's not right. No, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And Christian, if the Lord's laid something on your heart today as the instruments begin to play, I'd encourage you to just make an altar out of the seat where you're at and take it up with him. And friend, if you're here today and you do not know for sure that you're a born-again Christian, if you don't know for sure that heaven's your home, and I would never seek to assume that about anyone, but if you are questioning that and there, there, there's just not a, an assurance, man, brother, more blessed assurance, Jesus is mine, wonderful... That little lady, blind lady, Fanny Crosby, had a wonderful assurance of her salvation. Friend, if you don't know for sure that you're saved, get that settled today. Christian, we need to walk by faith. Faith believes God. Faith follows God. Faith vindicates our God. As you begin to play. Well, praise the Lord. Folks, thank you so much for being here this morning. My heart's desire is that we be men and women of faith. I believe, I believe what, if you'll read that chapter, it'll just bear out time and time again. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. And yet I think so many of us, we, we go at it on our own, don't we? I'm going to force him. Gonna... But faith says, God, I, I believe you. Faith says, God, I'll follow you. Faith says, God, you're vindicated. I believe you. Brother John, did you? Just real quick, I don't want to take a lot of time. Kentucky's going through a lot with law enforcement. 
Are you talking about brother, brother John? Really? <laughs> now, brother John has done a wonderful job in law enforcement. He he truly he he's, he is. He's a good man, and he's done a good job. And it's because he loves the Lord. The fear of the Lord is there, and he's handled himself wisely. Many, many times, and brother, I can only imagine some of the stories I've heard, and praise God, but let's be thankful for that. And, and folks, do pray. And I, John, I appreciate that. You do pray for our law enforcement. I, I know national guards are being called out. There's a lot going on in our country today, and we need to pray. But let's, Christians, you and I, let's, let's walk by faith. Let's walk by faith. All right? Faith believes God. Faith follows God. Faith vindicates God. Let's be dismissed with a word of prayer. So good to have each and every one of you here today. Brother Holly, why